apex weapons. We never really had them besides rampage weapons. But now that they have announced Sunbreak, what if apex weapons are now possible in Sunbreak? But how could this be possible? If you remember, during the live event, they've announced each of the new NPCs on Elgado. And one of them is the new blacksmith, Minail. Woo! Another waifu in Monsanto. Let's go! <laughs> okay, for real, what if Sunbreak does have craftable apex weapons? What's it going to look like? What kind of sharpness, raw attack, element or status does each of the weapon have? To give you some context, these weapons that I'll be showing you are the final upgrade stats of Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. Do note that these weapon stats or design might be entirely different in Sunbreak and some may not be added but again, let's just have fun guessing. Also, I just added the ones you might consider getting if they do end up in Sunbreak. Okay, let's begin. Let's first start off with my beloved main weapon, Greatsword. Here we have the Bloodbath Diablos Greatsword. It is one of my top most favorite weapon. You can already see that it has a ginormous amount of raw. Sharpness levels and affinity has to be compensated for that, but of course, it can be managed. You know, whenever I see this Greatsword, it's like a hunter's trophy. Any other Greatsword weapons in this list? is amazing on its own. Grim Claw Tigrex is also quite decent. We have natural purple sharpness and good amount of raw. Overall, a flexible greatsword for different builds. Sometimes, I just play by what's fun and not overthinking too much about the high raw. Nightlook Malfesto greatsword is one of those cases. You can get a few sleep procs during the hunt, but for the most part, this greatsword is super situational. There's a lot of strong choices for the longsword. I once told my friend that once you use the longsword, you can never go back. I'll admit the weapon is quite addicting to use. Rust Razor, Cyanotar, longsword is one of my favorite longswords. As you can see, it has that long white sharpness. You no longer have to worry about using handicraft or any sharpness skills. You also have a decent amount of raw and 5% affinity as a bonus. Absolutely broken when paired with great armor sets. Drill Tusk Tetsukabra longsword is a great alternative to Rust Razor's longsword. This one has a bit of increase in raw attack. You also get some extra plus 15 defense and a decent sharpness level. Pretty good, huh? Lastly, we have the Grimclaw Tigrex longsword. It has a decent amount of sharpness and good raw. Overall, a general choice for any armor build. Sword and Shield. It's a great weapon to use. Almost every Deviant monster can give you a great elemental Sword and Shield. But of course, I have to trim this down to three Sword and Shields. Here we have is the Dread Queen Rathian Sword and Shield. Look at that poison value. 44? I think Old Rathian Sword and Shield in Monster Hunter World Iceborne is 36. Anyhow, it's definitely high. It also has a decent amount of raw, good levels of sharpness, plus 10% affinity. This one is the Thunder Lord Zinogre Sword and Shield. We have a decent level of white sharpness, good amount of raw, thunder element is pretty high, plus 5% affinity. Dread King Rathalos is quite the same with 310 raw, 42 fire element, good sharpness levels, and 5% affinity. I do really wish we get these in Sunbreak. Next up, I'll be showing you these cool dual blades and not the Attack on Titan spoilers. Here we have the Snow Baron Lagombi's dual blades. It's definitely strong, but the final upgrade of the normal Lagombi is even stronger. Even so, this is still on par. It has a high amount of raw, 15% affinity, 25 ice, and a good sharpness level. Actually, do you guys want to see the final upgrade stats of each of the monsters that's already in Rise and Sunbreak? It's based on historical data like this video so do let me know so i can share them with you okay going back we have the soul seer mizutsune dual blade you see back in generations ultimate this dual blade is on par with royal ludroth final upgrade if you don't like the look of royal ludroths this one's for you lastly we have hellblade glavinus dual blade it's one of my favorite dual blades although it's unlikely that we're gonna see glavinus back in sunbreak i mean he was added already in world so there is that i still want to show you this 
because this was my counter weapon against the Gold Rathian and Silver Rathaloth. But who knows, we might get something similar with either of these two monsters in here. If you're into bonking monsters during hunts, I've got something for you. We have the Rust Razor Cyanotar's Hammer. Longsword isn't the only one that has a lengthy white sharpness. This one also has a high amount of raw, but don't go just yet, I'll show a much higher raw in just a sec. Actually, you know what? Let's do it already. Check out this Elder Frost Gamoth Hammer. God, I wish we have this monster come back. With a colossal 370 raw, 5% affinity, that's right, it's not negative, plus 10 defense, and a bit of icing element on top. Increasing that sharpness should be manageable, but wow, what a weapon. Come on Capcom, bring Gamoth back. Hello fellow Lance users. Don't worry, I've got something good for you too. What? What are you saying? You like the big raw damage? Just like the Elder Frost Hammer? Well, you see, Elder Frost Gamoth has a Lance too. Check out this weapon. Another colossal 380 raw, 5% affinity. Again, it's not negative and some icing on top. No pun intended. Also, this one is one of the strongest lands in Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate. But hold on a second, what if I care more about my sharpness while maintaining a high amount of raw? That's where Rust Razor Cyanotar's lands comes in and swoops it into your inventory. My boy Crab right here? Heck yeah, it's just amazing. Gunlands, also known as the Fun Lands in Rise. If you're a Gunlands main, correct me on this part, I'm still learning about the weapon. I've read some guides and reviews and got these recommendations. We have the Snow Baron Lagombi Gunlands. It has normal 5 shells, that sounds good. The weapon sharpness is decent, the raw damage is quite high, and 15% affinity is pretty good. Besides that, there's also an Elder Frost Gamoth Gun Lance. Same with the rest that I've mentioned a while ago, it has the same stats, but the sharpness level might be a challenge to manage for this weapon. If you're into Gun Lance shelling and explosions, Hellblade Glavinous Gun Lance is for you. It has a good amount of raw, 5% affinity, and 30 blast value. Switch Axe users, do you want a banger hack and slash blade? If so, this Elder Frost Gamoth Switch Axe is for you. This may sound redundant already, but it's just that good. This weapon is absolutely strong, but if you're not into a high amount of raw and you want to be a resident sleeper hunter, I'm about to show you the Dread Queen Rathian Switch Axe. The stats is quite close to what we had in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. With this weapon, you should be poisoning the monster a couple of times throughout the hunt. <laughs> Are you still with me? We've been covering a lot of powerful weapons in this video. Hopefully you're enjoying so far. Let's first start off with the Grimclaw Tigrex Hunting Horn. It's identical to any other Grimclaw weapon stats. And check out the buffs that this thing has. Whenever my friend and I are hunting down harder monsters, this is my go-to hunting horn. Another great alternative is the Silverwind Nargakuga Hunting Horn. Check out these skills. It's absolutely amazing when you're playing defensively against harder monsters. Insect Glaive, another weapon I'm still learning. Insect Glaive mains out there. Feel free to share your thoughts. If you like a crap ton of sharpness other than the Valstrax weapon, Rust Razor Cyanotar Insect Glaive is another great weapon choice for you. If you don't want to bounce off, while performing your combos. Silverwind Nargakuga Insectlave is a nice choice. Granted, you will only have 300 draw, but you're getting 20% affinity plus purple sharpness. A slight variation of this weapon is the Soul Seer Insectlave. 320 draw, 20% affinity, but you're trading off your sharpness level. Good variety, isn't that right, Iceborne? Charge Blade, my second most favorite weapon. If you're into condensed spinning slash playstyle, can't we call it Savage Axe? 
Again, the Rust Razor Crab is the right fit. I forgot to mention, even if we don't have the Rust Razor Cyanotar, we can still get these high amount of sharpness from the normal Shogun Cyanotar. If you're into the Unga Bunga SAD, just like me, unfortunately, the Elder Frost Gamma Charge Blade isn't that good. It uses Elemental, not Impact. Why? On the other hand, you can try the Grimclaw Tigrix Charge Blade if you prioritize sharpness over a bit of raw and affinity. Quick story, I remember back in Freedom Unite, my friend and I had a hard time hunting down a low rank Basarius. That's right, a low rank Basarius. We thought of trying a different weapon and found this feline Light Logan. We basically used this to slay the Basarius and we won with a level 1 ammo of course. <laughs> The Silverwind Nargakuga Light Bowgun reminded me of those days. Look at these stats. I had to showcase this weapon. It's one of the best Light Bowgun in Generations Ultimate. I can't speak much for the other Deviant Light Bowguns. If I remember correctly, most of the great Light Bowguns are on the normal monsters. Heavy Bowgun. To be honest, I never got into Heavy Bowgun up until they've introduced the Valor style Heavy Bowgun. Based on the recommendations online, I've noticed that some of them mentioned that the Soul Seer Mizutsune Heavy Bowgun, it's a strong hybrid Heavy Bowgun with 320 raw. You can do Rapid Pierce 3 and Water Pierce 1. On the other hand, you can try the Silver Wind Nargakuga Heavy Bowgun having the similar stats except you have the 30% affinity. Deviant heavy bowguns are quite underwhelming. As far as I know, most of the stronger heavy bowguns are on the normal monster. This is it. We are finally down to the very last weapon, the bow. Ted Ayan Garuga is a fairly strong bow. As you can see, there's not much coatings, but you can use the both level 1 and level 2 power coatings. If you're not satisfied with that, the Grimclaw Tigrex bow is a powerful bow. 360 raw, negative 20% affinity, but it has a lot of status files that you can work around with. You might have noticed some weapon types have a stronger deviant weapon and others not so much. But think about it, those weapon types that have a weaker deviant option have a busted weapon on a normal monster. And some of them are already in rise, so they are more likely to be added in Sunbreak. Cool, but what about Apex armors? Check out this video as I explain each of the powerful Apex armors that could be potentially added in Sunbreak. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe. Peace!